everyone, it is Drew here and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is an updated Instagram editing video because as many of you know, if you followed my channel for a while now, I have done multiple videos which I will make sure to put on the screen here and also put in the card somewhere in case you want to check out my old videos. They are going to be a little bit different than this one because back in the day I did have that whole feed. I was that Instagram feed lifestyle Instagrammer, if that even makes sense. I loved having a feed, I love coordinating my colors and stuff, but now I kind of just edit in a little bit of a different way. I kind of just focus on the photo itself as opposed to like an overall feed because I found myself only wearing certain colors I wanted to do things and post things that I couldn't and it was just kind of limiting like sometimes the feed is limiting even though it is fun it's like challenging and it's beautiful of course um, sometimes it can just be a little bit more limiting than you want it to be so my new Instagram style of editing is just a way that I'm gonna share with you guys in this video of course so make sure to go head over and follow me on Instagram my Instagram is at I'm Drew Scott I'm gonna put it on the screen for you guys I post a new photo almost every single day focused around men's fashion and lifestyle so definitely go give a follow over there but it's not 100% mandatory but you know it's always nice and yeah I'm gonna jump into today's video now so I'm sure we all know that without a photo there's no editing and there's no post to go on Instagram the first thing that I'm gonna teach you guys about a little bit is my three top tips on taking a really great Instagram photo and I kind of have like three and a half because one I feel like is kind of a given but also one that you might have not thought of every time you took in a photo tip number half is to just wipe your camera every time you take a photo just go in with your shirt really quickly on the back side if you want to give the camera a little bit of a wipe because this always I swear to you guys people don't understand how much it can really change the quality of your photo. If you have a little bit of your hand grease or a little bit of oil on there or a little bit of like just dirt or something that was in your pocket on the lens, it's so easy to just have a blurry photo. And then when you wipe it, you instantly can tell the difference. I highly suggest just quickly wiping your camera off before taking a picture. If you're out taking outfit photos and you're taking the pictures and you're looking at them and you're like, wow, this is not exactly what I wanted in my outfit photo. Like my outfit does not look the best. I feel like I look a little bit short. That is so common because it is so easy to take a photo with your phone at just like eye level and you just look so much shorter than you actually even look in person so my first big tip is always take your outfit photos at a little bit of a lower angle like if you are taking it at an eye level here take it more at like a belly button level I guess and shoot a little bit upwards as well tilting your phone a little bit like this or having your photographer just squat all in all just automatically increases your height a little bit and it also suctions you in a tiny bit as well you could take it sort of at an angle to whatever you like to do but I automatically feel like this really elevates any outfit it and it just makes the outfit overall look a little bit better. So definitely try that next time you're out shooting. Second tip is pretty simple as well. This one is just to take outfit photos on more simpler backgrounds, especially when you are starting out taking Instagram photos, because I do find a lot of people jump into just taking their outfit photos like in the middle of the street or something. And that is great if you have like a DSLR camera, like a high tech, you know, big one with a lens, because you can get that depth of field, which is essentially like that blur behind your body. I do not like the portrait mode on the iPhone. I think it just makes it look a little bit fake. So I take all of my pictures just like the normal camera camera on the iPhone so I do suggest when you start out just taking them on more simpler backgrounds you could do like a vine wall something with texture something more like unicolored so there's just like one color across the whole background is nice something more simpler to make your outfit or just your face or whatever you're taking a photo of just pop and contrast a little bit more from the backdrop and then my last quick tip is to use the brightening feature when taking photos now this has saved me the most especially I find with the iPhone max it has been a lifesaver so many people don't know about this feature and I just want to let you guys know that it is so key and iconic you're probably telling yourself you're what you just fucking tell us already and I'm going to do so right now so basically what it is is when you go into the camera and you click on the screen so click on the screen pull down and up on that little Sun and it actually adjusts your exposure, which nobody knows this. I mean, there are, of course, a lot of people. I did not invent this at all. There are so many people that know this, and I find that this really, really helps if you're in low lit situations or you're in like direct sunlight. You can really adjust the lighting, and sometimes your camera just goes whack anyways for some reason. If you're wearing a full black outfit, sometimes it's harder to take photos of full black, so I feel like if you just click on the photo and you pull the sun down a little bit, it instantly makes the blacks a little bit darker, and it overall just kind of fixes the lighting of the photo, so that's a huge key when taking your photo just so you have a nice even exposure on your picture before going in and editing it. Guys, I have literally filmed this video three times. It should probably be like mm, semi-illegal, I think. Okay, so I guess we're gonna jump into the apps now. So the apps that I use, there's six of them, and look at my notifications. Does that give you anxiety? Does it? Sometimes it gives me some, but I already have it most of the time anyways, so it doesn't really matter. Apps that I use, there are six of them that I like to use. They are Facetune, Visco, Snapseed, PixArt, Hooji, and Tezza. So those are the six apps that I typically, uh, I guess, reach for. 
when I'm filtering my photos or editing them. Face tune, I use to really tune myself, give myself a full catfished appearance when I post on Instagram. Visco, I use to uh, filter photos, add grain to pictures, sharpen photos, things like that. Snapseed, I use for two features, which are tonal contrast and selective tool. Uh, pick art, I only mainly use this for when I am adding like a lens flare to a photo, so I don't really ever dive into pick art, or I don't really dive into Huji that much either. Basically, Huji just gives you kind of like a film effect, but sometimes I notice it's a little bit too harsh, so I don't use Huji that often. And then the Tezza app, which is a newfound love of mine. If you do not know who Tezza is, she is a blogger, love Tezza. She has a shop online that you can buy her presets at, and you could buy um, a collage kit. My wall has her entire collage kit on it, but she also has an app that's full of filters, so we love that for her. Thank you, Tezza, for these filters. I guess we're now into the editing portion of this video, which is amazing for the third time. So let's just edit up these pics. I'm getting really good at editing the same photos now. So guys, the first thing I'm gonna do is jump into the app called Tessa. And when I'm inside of this app, I'm actually going to click on this photo here, which is the one I took at brunch today. And I wanted to give you guys kind of like a little synopsis on all the filters down here and not just apply the one I like. So you can see if you wanna download or pay for this app. So the ones that are in here are called Fresh, Vintage, Mood, Yum, Pop, Toasty, which is one I'm going to be using um, in a couple of seconds here. Dream, Glow, Crisp, Almond. The black and white filter is one of my favorites. Um, it's just such a good black and white. And the almond filter is also so pretty. I love the way that that filter makes everything look. Mocha, Tangerine, Pine, and Pistachio. But the one that I used for this photo was the Toasty one. And I just really have been loving editing with warm colors lately, which is why I have been gearing myself towards more brown tones and more like warm tones in general. So for the Toasty filter, I'm going to double click on it and actually adjust it. I typically only use her filters at about half strength because sometimes they are a little bit too much. So for this one, I think I'm gonna go in at like maybe 28 looks good to me. Click the check mark and save. So that was the basic uh, filtering process. I do this on a lot of my photos. I've been using this app for like three months now and I really have been liking the way that the um, photo coloring has looked. One more quick coloration. I'm gonna do this green one here because there is a filter in here that just really looks pretty on this one. I forget which one it is. I think it's called, I think it's actually, hmm. Ooh, almond looks so nice. I think I'm gonna put almond on that photo. I love more yellow toned green, so that looks so pretty. Almond looks amazing. I'm gonna use it almost at full strength. I think it really shifts the color, but it almost makes it look like those were the original color. So I'm gonna save that. As you see, the coloring on this app is just really, really pretty. I think you can do a lot with it. But after I do that, I like to go into Visco to crop my photos. So I'm gonna put in my little photo that I took today at the restaurant, and I'm going to click the toolbar at the bottom. And first, I'm going to crop it. So I'm gonna go into the four or five crop, which if you did not know, this is the perfect crop for Instagram. And sorry if the sun is shining on me, guys. Adjust it to where I want it to go. So I'm thinking like right about here, but I'm actually going to straighten it with the tabletop top and like the chair as opposed to the mirror because I'm going to share with you guys how you can easily fix that mirror up there on the end and I'm going to pull it out a tiny bit more because I feel like there's a lot of interest in this photo which I love so I'm going to add a little bit of sharpening to it I always add about four points of sharpening I just feel like this is the perfect amount for me and then you can also do um a little bit of grain in here if you wanted to I typically um add grain to a lot of my photos, but I think this one looks super, super clean. And then grain kind of makes it just look a little bit like the white wall is like muddy. So I'm going to actually leave it as is and export it to the camera roll at full size. Let me get a little comfortable here because we're gonna start tuning it up really good and fresh, you guys. So I'm in phase two now, and this is the app that I spend probably the most time in. And it's not because I'm catfishing myself the full time. It's because there's lots of features I like to share with you guys. I'm going to share with you how to tan yourself, how to adjust your face, how to pull down your hairline, how to fix unangular lines. So there's a couple things I want to share with you guys in here. But the first is using the reshape tool at the bottom. So I'm going to click reshape and I always use the refine tool. So I'm going to work on my face first because that area needs the most work, of course, in this image. And the thing I like to do first is I'm gonna give myself a little bit more of a square-shaped hairline by doing pulling it over a little bit, and then I'm gonna pull the hairline down some. I always, always adjust my hairline. Like, that's just what I always do in every photo because I have a little bit of a higher one, but I really don't adjust it that much. I just do it a little bit so I am more comfortable with it because I don't have the best hairline ever, and I do wanna maybe one day have a hairline surgery. But probably not because it seems like too much work. And then I'm gonna pull this down um, and you can zoom in a little bit more here so that you're not warping this like bottle of alcohol. I guess that's probably what that is. 
I'm gonna pull in my ear a little bit. I have kind of large ears, so I always tend to pull those in the slightest bit. I'm gonna work this out. And next what I'm going to do is, since we're in the reshape tool, I'm gonna actually fix this little wall here. And what I'm going to do is just push it to where it looks a little bit more straight. So I'm gonna push it all over like this. And this is kind of tedious. You have to kind of work um, at this for a couple of seconds till you get it pretty straight. And what you're gonna do up at the top here to just fix this super easily is grab and just pull it all up. So you're just going to like pull everything out of frame that's disgusting. You can just wipe it out of the frame. That is exactly what I'll do up there. And I think that it just makes the um, picture a little bit more clean because before the angles weren't the best, so. And then what I'm gonna do is go in with details and I'm just gonna quickly detail up my face a little bit and my body. And next we're gonna make the eyes pop. So how you're gonna do this is go into the tones section. So click tones and then you're going to make sure that the tone is white and you're going to add this into your eye. So just tap it into the eye and look at what it does. It literally just brightens the eye the slightest little bit and I think it makes it look a little bit more like captivating and dreamy. Like you look a little bit more mm, sexual, I guess you could say, which gives you that extra boost of likeage, which we all love every now and then, so. And then what I'm gonna do is just smooth the skin the slightest bit. So I'm gonna smooth under this eye. It looks really bad for some reason. I don't even know what's up there today. And then I also go over my entire skin and I know you guys are like, wow, you cannot smooth your whole skin because you look legitly plastic. But then I take the erase tool and I tap. I'm gonna tap over the whole surface of my face and it's just gonna tone it down a little bit to pull out some of that natural skin texture again. And one last thing, I'm gonna go into tones here and I do this on my jawline all the time because I like it to be a little sharper. I'm gonna grab this color here, which you can use the picker tool and sort of grab from your facial hair and I'm going to recreate my very own jawline. So I'm gonna restructure it a little bit. There's a little bit of harshness there. And I'm gonna take the eraser, erase it so there's a clean, like sharp edge on the jaw. And then use the eraser and tap on the color we applied, which sort of pulls it away a little bit. And instantly it makes it look like you just have a little bit more of a structured jaw. You can even add more of the tones into the actual facial hair area by simply tapping. So I'm just doing a, a nice little tapping motion on top of the image, which gives you a slightest bit of color up there. And if you add too much, tap in with your eraser, which kind of removes a little bit of that color. And that is what I would do to that photo. The next one I'm going to edit is the one that we filtered in the green grass. So I'm gonna import that into Visco just so we can go ahead and crop the image. So I'm going to crop it a little bit, probably like, mm, I'm gonna kind of cut my foot off a little bit. I like cutting my foot off in some images because it instantly almost makes you look a little bit like longer because your foot is going off the page so you can't actually see where the end of your body is. I'm gonna go in with a sharpening tool maybe do a tiny bit of sharpening. And this is a photo that I would like to add grain to just to make it kind of look a little bit more filmy, I guess you could say. So I'm gonna add a little bit of grain. But pro tip, if you are one to do a lot of face tuning, if you like tuning your face a whole ton, then do that first and then add the grain because you're not gonna wanna tune on top of grain. It's kind of hard. You can't really um, adjust your skin that much. So definitely add the grain after you tune your photos. So I just pop that photo into Facetune. We're gonna do a little bit of adjusting. So the first thing I'm gonna do is reshape. So so on this photo, I never ever reshape my body. Honestly, you guys like, I don't even know what I would reshape here. Oh, I'm wearing the same shirt. What a coincidence. <laughs> wow. And um, I had blonde hair here. This photo was taken a while back, but I am going to, of course, kind of tone my hairline down just the slightest bit. I mean, I guess for this one, I'm probably gonna do a little bit more and I'm gonna give a bit more volume to the back of my hair because it kind of looks a little flat. And then I'm gonna push my ear in a little bit. So this process for me, after you do it a couple times, it kind of gets quick. Like, look at this. There we go. And it also looks like my eye is semi-open, which kind of scares me. So I'm gonna go in with tones and I'm gonna grab a black tone and I'm just gonna scrub it on that eye area to make it look like fully shut. And you can even take your eraser and kind of just erase the top and bottom if you feel like some got anywhere. But I think that kind of just fixed that a little bit. I'm just gonna go ahead and refine my eyebrow by pulling it up a little bit. Give yourself a little bit more of that Bella Hadid snatch look, which I'm sure we all love. And then I'm gonna pull up my lip a little bit. And my jaw actually looks pretty good in this photo, which I cannot relate on the daily. I might add a little bit of detail to the edge of it because if you add a tiny bit of detail, it actually kind of sharpens it a little. Do you see that? But then it also kind of makes the grainy skin look weird. So I'm gonna kind of scrub it off, but, but you do still get a nice slight adjustment to the jaw, a little bit sharper. But the socks and shoes look blue, which I do not like blue tones in my photo at all. So I'm actually going to fully whiten 
the entire shoe and sock with the uh, whitening tool. That is how I would edit this more warm toned with a lot of green in there, which I know a lot of times people don't really know how to edit with green. Green can be tricky. A lot of people don't like it, but I personally really do love the color green. I want to show you guys how you can edit colors individually, and this is something I recently found out as well, but you load your photo into Visco, click on the tools at the bottom, go to the very end, there's one called HSL at the very end of the toolbox, click the HSL and then click green. I would grab the hue section and pull it all the way to the left, which makes your greens yellow toned, which I love, and you can increase the saturation of the green, decrease the saturation. I personally like to leave it like right about here. I think it looks so much prettier as a yellow toned green. Um, but for this one, I might add like a little bit more saturation to make the blue a little bit more bolder. But you can change a lot of the colors individually using the HSL feature, which I think is really nice, really simple, and also very easy. But I do want to edit one more picture for you guys. I want to edit this one fully in Visco though, because I know a lot of people just like using one app and I do that all the time. If I'm on the go, something really quick, I just throw it into Visco and I'm good. I'm going to share with you guys my favorite Visco filters so that way you can add them to your favorites as well in case you want to add any of them. My favorites are, I'm going to go from right to left. A4 is my all-time favorite. A6 is one of my other all-time favorites. And then M5 is my other favorite. So those are my top three. A4, A6, and M5, but the other ones that I do like are J5, J3, HB2, G6, and C6. And for this photo, I probably would just stick to A6. I really love the way that that one looks, and I would probably just add maybe like mm, eight, point, eight points on it. Press the check mark, and then I'm gonna sharpen it a tiny bit, and I'm also going to um, adjust it. So sometimes for photos like this, I like to give it like a cool little like interesting element to it by twisting it or cropping it like a little bit closer. So I'm gonna do like this right here for a nice little close up crop. Once it's been saved, I'm popping it into Facetune, which is where the rest of the editing for this image is probably going to go into play. And the first thing I'm gonna do is whiten the shirt to make sure that it's perfectly white. That's all I would do there is add like a tiny bit of white uh, detailing to this image. And then what I'm going to do is go in and really adjust my face. So I'm gonna click tones. Um, picker and then I'm gonna adjust my beard here. So as you can see it looks like I have a double chin Which I do I'm going to just adjust in and pull a little bit more color into my beard area And I know it looks kind of crazy now, but don't worry. We're gonna fix it So I'm gonna add it like that go in with erase and this tap on the excess there And I'm also going to reshape a little bit. So I'm gonna push up my double chin because no one wants a double chin like what another great tip after you've sort of replaced or adjusted where your double chin is supposed to go is click the smoother tool and just smooth this whole section yes i know it looks kind of crazy there but you can really nicely then go in and reshape your jaw and put it in the right place and you won't have that additional line underneath basically that double chin line kind of gets fully removed with the smoother feature and i just think that this looks so much better than like before like look at that are you kidding and um i know that the beard is kind of like darker but honestly you, you're no one's gonna see the before except for you guys i guess but no one did see the original before Ooh, i actually do see one last thing i want to edit which is this yellow toned hair i'm gonna click the tones tool picker and pick from this white tone and then i'm going to brush the white tone over the yellow do you see how you can just pull away that yellow tone because sometimes you get like really bad yellow tones and blonde hair it's really hard to keep it consistently nice and blonde again not too much just a little bit of filtering and a little bit of adjusting and you are good to go scrolling through my instagram as you guys can see my photos are not too overly crazily edited like they were before which i did love those photos of course but i do like a little bit more of like the raw look now i just think it looks quite nice but have fun with it guys um, download some of those apps I shared with you and share with me your Instagram editing tips. I'd love to hear them in the description box below, the comment section. I always say that, the comment section below. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at I am Drew Scott for brand new videos every single Thursday and Sunday. And you can also follow me for your daily dose of Drew on Instagram at I am Drew Scott. And yeah, I think that's about all. I hope you guys enjoyed this simple little Instagram editing video and I gave you a couple of tips and I think I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys.